What kind of music do you like? Actually, I like Eminem. Eminem is a famous crapper. No, raper. Ripper. Yeah, I mean rapper. <laughs> the bionic man. <laughs> he may be the world's been. first bionic man, but Frank still has a few things to learn from us humans. Still, he is pretty amazing. He stars in a new film, The Incredible Bionic Man, on the Smithsonian Channel. And this is Bertolt Meyer, the host of the documentary, a social psychologist at the University of Zurich, and an inspiration for Frank, Frank's creator. Good morning, Bertolt. Good morning, Vinnie. I can't help but notice you have a somewhat creepy twin next to you. Is he, he is meant to, in fact, look like you. His face was modeled after a 3D scan of mine, but I think it looks rather mortifying. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the bionic man. So he is close to 50% of the body in terms of something being reproduced. Right. The purpose of the bionic man project was to find out what it looks like if we get all of the spare parts for the human body that we already have today and put them together in one place. So he's really meant to showcase the current state of medical bionic technology. So we have retinal implants in his brain that pick up, well, if he had a brain, he would have a retinal implant, that pick up the image from this tiny camera that is then transmitted directly into the person's brain, restoring a sense of vision to the blind. And this is not science fiction. This device has received FDA approval only two days ago and will wow. go into actual people. Um, there's a few great things about him that I find amazing. For example, in his artificial circulatory system, there is uh, artificial blood, the first prototype of real wow. artificial blood made of nanoparticles mm -hmm. that have the ability to bind and give off oxygen, just like real blood. Wow. And all of these amazing discoveries that we've made along the way that show us how far we've come already right. uh, in replacing parts of the body. It's a million dollars worth of parts, yes. including the latest in hand technology, in effect, which you yourself wear. Uh, I do, although he has last year's model and I have this year's model, so my bionic hand is actually a little bit more advanced than his is. And what can it do? Well, it can move all of the fingers, which you might find not very special, but for a bionic hand that's actually controlled by the person wearing it, that is something very special. Mm -hmm. um, it has built-in pressure sensors so that the hand understands the shape of the object that you're holding. So when you hold the mobile phone like this, mm -hmm. the fingers sense the touch wow. of the phone and adapt the hand accordingly. And I can do something that you cannot do, and that is I can rotate, rotate the hand. wrist a wow. full 360. Wow. It's not very useful in everyday life, yeah. that feature. I call it the party trick, but it shows that potentially bionic limbs can do more things than their normal counterparts. As a social psychologist, I'm curious your take on the ethics of all of this, though, because it would seem you have a skill set that my natural hand can't do. Looking down the road, I mean, couldn't people theoretically say, I want a part that God didn't give me because it improves my ability to perform a task? Absolutely, and that is one of the core ethical questions that we're also touching upon in the program. What will the future look like where we have body parts that go beyond their natural counterparts? Mm -hmm. What if legs become available that make us run faster? What if hands become available that let us type faster? We're not there yet, but if the technology comes around, what will it do to society? I mean, there's already plastic surgery, so people are yeah. changing their bodies to be aesthetically different, mm -hmm. why would that stop to change the body to, in order to increase its functionality? Mm -hmm. um, and it's potentially a big market too. I mean, at the moment, bionic body parts like these are a niche market catering to the very few people who lost a limb. If bionic body parts c get to a point where they are so good that they cater to everyone, mm -hmm. they have the potential to create a new market and a lot of profits are to right. be made. So It's fascinating to think how much of you is bionic before you stop becoming human as well. Bertolt, thank you so much. And Frank, thanks to you. The Incredible Bionic Man premieres Sunday night on the Smithsonian Channel, which we should note is partnered with CBS-owned Showtime.